Welcome back to the Over Comfort Podcast, you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here, for all the love and support. If you guys didn't get the chance to see last week's episode with Isaac, make sure you guys check that out. But before you guys go, make sure you guys stay tuned in to this episode right here. I am doing a solo episode today because the time is coming. It is today is December 5th. And it is closer to the date that my mom passed away December 9th. So I thought it would be a cool or interesting episode to talk about where I was on December 9th, how I found out the news, because I feel like I've never really talked about it. And everybody kind of always wonders, like everyone wants to know everybody's story. Everyone was kind of everywhere. Um, How I was feeling those days. And yeah. I'm not going to be drinking today, you guys. I'm taking it easy and slow. I am a little hungover. I will not lie. I was at a music festival last night, and I just, you know, too many, too many drinks. But, and I want to be sober to have this conversation because I want to be able to remember and for you guys to fill my heart and hear me out. Um, okay, well, December 9th was a Sunday. It was a very gloomy day. It was also one of the first times that I was going to be singing on my worship team. I was part, I was in church and I was playing guitar and all that stuff. And it was like one of my first times going up. So I stayed at my grandma's house, my grandma Rosa's house. And oh my God, I just remember waking up in the morning. I was sleeping on the couch. Um, and I was going to go with my Thea, my aunt to church. I was going to, I don't remember if I was going to meet Jackie, but meet Jackie there at church. Um, but Cheeky's had been at my cousin's wedding in Vegas. My siblings had been over there. And honestly, I'm going to be very straight up. I, a lot of like those memories fade. It's going to be 11 years. This is the 11th anniversary. And it's crazy to say that because honestly, it goes by painfully fast and slow, if that makes sense. Like, it just feels, I when I say it, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it's been 11 years, but like, it feels like, wow. Like, throughout those years, I'm kind of just amazed at everybody's growth. Um, but back to the story, I wake up, I'm getting ready, and I just remember a lot of chaos, but no one wanted to tell me why. I remember my grandma crying and my tia crying and no one would tell me anything like I was they were just kind of like oh well, we're we're gonna see I'm calling this person I'm calling that person um yeah they're saying that they can't find it but they wouldn't say names they couldn't find what I'm like okay um weird um I go into the bathroom and I start calling my mom and I'm like, hey, mom, I just want to make sure that you're okay. Which is crazy because I had just talked to her like that Friday because me and Johnny, well, Johnny really wanted to go on the trip to go with my mom because we were by ourselves. And um, he really, really wanted to go. And my mom, the only way that he would go is if he went with me, if I went with him and I had his passport and all that stuff. And I was like, I can't mom, I have a compromiso on Sunday. So I think about it now. I'm like, if Johnny would have went, if I, if we, I, we really realistically wouldn't be here. And I know that's like, I don't know. It's crazy. God has his ways. God has his plans. And it just amazes me to this day. It's like, damn. And, um, I just remember her saying like, Oh, make sure you take care of your brother. Then your brother really wants to come, but make sure you take care of him. I'm like, okay, I will. And I believe that was one of the last times, like the text messages that I had with her. And back then, like 11 years ago, like I wish like so deeply that I didn't switch phones. Like it, I, and it would be, I would be able to save it now. I wish I had that phone to like reread the messages and like talk to her or whatever. But I had texted her that morning. I'm like, hey, mom, are you are you OK? Like, I just want to make sure. And everybody kind of knows. But she was coming. She left from Monterrey and was going to Ciudad de Mexico to film La Voz. 
at that time she was a judge and it was already gonna be like towards the end of the season and I just remember like a lot of my mom was going through a lot of pain at that time um so I'm here texting her I'm like okay mom like let me know messages would go green and they would go green either way because she had a blackberry she hated iPhones. she didn't want like anything to do with iPhone <laughs> so it wasn't weird to me that the messages would be green because you know she had an uh, android blackberry um phone at that time which was her favorite phone and then i get a text from a friend from high school at that time and she's like hey i'm so sorry like are you okay and i'm like hey well, well, what's what's going on sorry for what she's like oh you don't know it's all over the news <sighs> and then She's like, well, they can't find your mom's plane. And I'm like, oh, no. I was like, God, please, like, just please. Oh, my God, I really hope I don't cry. <laughs> oh. And I remember I'm just like, please, God, please just don't, like, don't let it be her plane. And I remember, and I, I say this with so much respect, like, I was like, I really hope it's somebody else. Like, and I wished it on another family member. And at that time, it was a family member that we weren't talking to. And I, at this, I mean, right now, and I, I don't know. And maybe it would be bad if I say it or maybe not. But I did wish at that time that it was my tío Lupe. Because I, it was just a really rough time for our family. And, like, we didn't talk to him or whatever. And I think as a daughter, I'm just like, oh, my God, I really hope that it's not, him. like, my mom. I, like, I text her and I'm like, mom, please answer me, like, please like just reply I need to know that you're okay and it's not I I, and I say respect I'm so sorry to like my cousins for wishing that but like for me at that time you have to think about like oh man like I just I wish it wasn't her you know so I'm just crying and bawling in the bathroom I go into the bathroom and I'm crying I'm like and I start calling my mom I'm like come on like answer and it would go to voicemail and I'm like mom please like just answer the phone like I need you to like I need to know that you're okay just answer um and Rosie knocks on the door and she's like what's going on what's wrong and I'm like they can't find my mom's plane she's like I know I know like don't freak out like we're gonna figure it out or whatever I call my sister I'm like sister and at that time it was hard to talk to my sister because of everything that was going on about that rumor I've heard my mom, I'm like, sister, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm sorry I haven't talked to you. Like, but where are you? I need you. She's like, okay, I'm on my way. Don't worry. She's like, don't be sorry. Um, and after that, everyone just kind of came to the house and we're trying to figure out like, hey, like, okay, so they can't find your mom's plane. Like, they don't have any signal for it or whatever. And at that time, it was just that they couldn't find the plane. It wasn't that she had passed away. It wasn't that this, this, or that. Um, and it, after that, it kind of becomes like a blur. And I just remember everybody coming to the house, and we were all praying. We're like, God, just please, like, let's find this plane. And we were kind of like, well, what do we do? They, at that time, it was like 8 in the morning, eight in the, 8, 7 in the morning, and we go, we're all together, and church starts at 12 or 1, I want to say. Um, and they're like, do you still want to go? Like, do you still want to think? Do you still want to, like, sing or whatever? And I'm like, the only way that I'm going to get through this is if I go to church. And ever since then, like, I, I've always, like, I'm, I've always trusted God. Like, I'm like, okay, God, like, I can do this, like, we're going to find her. And um, so I went to church. We went to church and I sang in pain. Like it was one of the worst pains in my life. Like, and I've always told my friends this. I'm like, there's nothing else that's going to hurt me. And else, no, there's nothing else that's going to hurt me more in the world than the day that I lost my mom. Like there's no much, like more pain that's going to hurt me. Like I feel like I've been through the worst of the worst already. And I went to go sing, and um, it was how I, it was how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us so 
Bible that one um he loves us uh -huh. that one yeah and I remember I'm like I was just praying I'm like God like and in my head I wasn't like saying saying it but I was like God just you know I'm not, you already know my heart's like, I, like my siblings, like we need you, like we need to figure this out. Um, and it just became chaos. We come back from church, there's media outside, there's press. And I just like, imagine like, dude, everyone was like, w w where, where is this fucking plane? Like, where is it? It was un undiscoverable. Like we just didn't know whatever. My sister gets to the house, um, and I just remember everyone being mad. Like, I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, I didn't want to eat for, like, days. And everybody was like, Jenica, you need to eat. Like, it's important for you to eat. Um, just, like, whatever. It was it was just hard. It was super hard. Um, after that, we kind of just stayed there for, like, a week. We sent my Theos to go find her. Um, I think it was just too hard for us as kids at that time to go. And I kind of regret it. I regret not going because she had a closed casket. So I wasn't able to see inside. And I just remember them telling me, like, you don't want to see what's inside. Like, it was just parts of her bodies and it wasn't. It was uncomfortable to see. And I remember like the day that my dad passed away. I remember that after that, my mom just wanted um, close casset because it just felt like ugly. I I say again with a lot of respect, it just felt it's just scary as a kid to see that. But I personally regret I'm like, I wish I went to go see everything to see the site, to see where it was at, to see what was left. And I guess had people had already been there. They had found the plane, parts of the plane, the black box of the plane disappeared. And apparently, like, the malfunctioning, something happened where, I don't know. It was an old plane made in 1969, the same year my mom was born. Coincidence. Um, I don't know. But I do just... I, re I now that I'm 26, 11 years later, I do regret not being able to see what was inside. And I remember like we didn't want to go home. I didn't want to go home. I stayed at my grandma's for like almost a month before I finally went back home. And it was just like I don't she had left everything specifically in certain areas like her pajamas, the way that she was cooking she was wearing, the last thing I remember she was wearing was like plaid pajamas and pink, a pink shirt. And I know that there's like a picture somewhere of her cooking in the kitchen. Um, and she had gotten dressed, left those pajamas like in the sink of her vanity in her bathroom. And I was just so scared to go home. But Mikey and... I think Cheekies was able to go and they slept in her bed. And how do you go back home to someone that's not there anymore? And it was just like my mom worked so hard to get this house. And like, you know, we we finally like felt OK for a while. Like, wow. And it was just kind of like a reality like that I didn't want to face yet. And I just remember I'm like. I remember even putting out like a note on my Instagram. I'm like, can you guys just respect our privacy? Like we couldn't even go outside to like breathe. If there was there was cameras, there were just people there. There was just like super uncomfortable. But I didn't know where else to go. I just felt really lost. I felt so lost and confused. And then. um, And yeah, and now it's kind of like as the day comes closer or like years pass by, memories start to fade. Like a lot of that time of my life, like I don't remember and it sucks because I wish I did. Memories of my mom starts to fade and it really, really sucks. Um, And it's always harder as the day gets closer. Like my mind like automatically remembers the trauma of those weeks and those days. And um, it was like, 
it's it's unwanted like it reminds me and then I get in my little moods and usually like on December 9th I'm with my siblings or we're going to do something or sometimes we're by ourselves I like to be by myself um now like me and Omi kind of share the same pain because her mom passed away almost two years I think it's gonna be two years this year or three years this year um, that her mom passed away and her mom passed away December 8th. So it's just crazy how that happens too. Like we kind of just sit together and we're like, are you okay? Like what's going on? We're going to go on a quick break and then we'll come back and explain a little bit more of the story. So we'll be right back. All right, you guys, welcome back. So let's get back into the story. I ended off saying that with Omi, you know, we kind of share the same day and kind of just hang out together. Um, and it kind of like reminds me a lot. Like I go back to those times and I'm just like, wow, like I can't believe that this is my life. And I always ask God and I hate that I, ha I question it. We already looked into the plane. We looked into where it was at, what happened. But it's just like, did somebody do this? Like, did somebody like have it out for my mom or like, you know, and it sucks because uh, we never, we would never know. We would never know why or who does this or if it was just simply just an accident. And I hope that, you know, one day if it wasn't like that, God can show us and reveal it to us. But then it's like, do I want to be reminded and kind of just be upset again? It's just, it's, it's a lot of mixed feelings and the aftermath of December 9th has been wild. Like my family basically hates each other. <laughs> we have so much shit going on and it's so disappointing. And it's like my mom was that rock and foundation that everyone kind of relied on financially and I guess emotionally. And it sucks because my mom was just more than like a paycheck and you know, she was a beautiful, beautiful human and she loved her family. And like, I think about my siblings and I just remember like, I didn't want to cry. Like, I hate crying. I hate crying. Like, I felt like I needed to be strong for them because they were so broken. Like Cheeky's had been through so much already. Jackie had just gotten married. Ugh, she had just gotten married. Mikey had just finished having a baby and Johnny was barely like, I don't, I don't even remember. If I was 15, he was like 12, 11. Um, and me and him really leaned on each other, too, because like my dad had passed away three years before that. And it's just like it, it amazes me, like where life takes everybody and like the plans that God like does have for us. And I and I I say this like as someone that has learned so much from this experience, it's like if I didn't go through that, if God didn't take my mom away, like I wouldn't be where I'm at now. And Lord knows where I would be. You know, obviously I would love to have her here to be able to hug her and hold her and cherish more moments with her to be able to take pictures of her and to like see her again and hug her to smell her. Like it's just weird. Like there's, this, there's a scent that like, I wish I can smell. It's like, I would like her perfume or her essence like it's just it lights up a room and it feels like it's been dark since she's left um I know that my mom had gone through a lot my mom was going through a lot at that time and I was barely 15 and she was like in pain you know she she was already tired she had worked her ass off for years and she was already telling me like I want to retire like I want to stay home with you I want to stay home with Johnny like I don't want to miss out on anything anymore um because she missed out on a lot a lot of things like my birthday like my birthday always like no matter what like Something would always happen on my birthday, even to this day. Like, Cheekies is always working on my birthday, which is fine. Like, I'm older now. It doesn't bother me. But it is, like, moments that I wish that I can have back and really enjoy and experience with her. Um, because she was ready to, like, live a whole, 
wholesome life, a homey life. She was already ready to like chill, like, and finally be that mom that we like miss so much, like going to Disney with. And I remember like vibe. I remember going Christmas shopping with her and her buying all my cousins Tiffany bracelets. And I still have the bracelet to this day. Um, and her just loving being home. Like we would go to the mall and enjoy each other and, and go to the movies. Um, and it's just like, it really puts things in pers- into perspective. Like I know that she's so much better and so much happier now. And I know like, she sits like with God, she's with my dad and every other person that she loved, um, that, you know, passes away. But it kind of just like, it still hurts. It's going to be 11 years and it's like, damn, it doesn't ever go away. And I think it doesn't go away more because it's so public and it's a reminder. Like if it was within, if we weren't in the spotlight, if we didn't have the reality show, like I feel like it would be easier because at least with my dad, like I miss my dad, but I can grieve him privately and I don't have to worry about seeing pictures all the time, everywhere. Like we're being constantly reminded of like that this person isn't here anymore. Um, and it kind of just, I don't know, it kind of sucks, but I'm also grateful. Like it's a, it's a bittersweet feeling because I like, I love the reality show. I love that we have those memories, those ending memories, like with them. And I remember like the producer at that time, they went to Monterrey. They were able to see my mom last and be able to see her, like her last show. Um, They recorded it and it was just like, I remember him telling me like, I don't know, like I just remember him. He said he hopped on the plane and had this weird feeling and it was just weird. And then another thing, like I had woken up like around three, four in the morning when it supposedly crashed, I guess. And I just remember like feeling sick in my stomach that day. I was like, ugh, like the, whatever. I never wake up in the middle of the night unless I have to go to the bathroom. But that's like, you know, rare. But I would just remember waking up that day and like being, I don't know. I just felt weird. Like it, the energy felt weird. And you know, whose other passing that reminded me of was Kobe Bryant's that same day. Like it was super gloomy. It was cloudy. It was, it was just weird. And, and the magnitude of someone passing like that and I see Vanessa Bryan and I see Natalia and I see the kids and I'm just like wow like I I constantly pray for like them or people that have that same experience as me because it sucks it sucks it's a it's it's beautiful because people remember them but it sucks because it's like wow like it's a constant reminder and how do you move on now um and I guess for me moving on you know I always have to carry that memory, the the values, the morals, everything she's taught me, even in like the midst of this bullshit with my family. Like I remember her and what she wanted. And, you know, at the end of the day, she literally went to that concert to go to come home and buy us gifts for Christmas. Like she said, like, oh, I'm going to come back and I'm going to buy you every gift that you want for Christmas. And it's like, that was one of the worst Christmases in my life. And like, oh my God, it was just so, so bad. It was so bad. And I know that now that she's resting and so happy and sleeping, she just needed to rest. Like, she would be so tired. Like, she would take us to the movies and she would fall asleep in the movie theater. And I'd be, i look at her and I'm like, damn, I wish you were awake, but I know that she'd be so tired, like, because of how hard she was working, she would come home from Monterrey, I mean, from Ciudad de Mexico after La Voz to come here, and, you know, really just do her best as a mom, and she really did her best. Um, I remember spending, like, that first year at the house, 
the first December night, then we all got drunk. <laughs> we don't get drunk anymore because we're kind of like, okay, like let's not drown in alcohol and, you know, be sad. But I do remember that first year we got so drunk and I, I drank without anybody knowing. Okay. I was still underage, but I was like, I wanted to just, if it, it was a horrible, horrible feeling. And I just remember being with my cousins and it was just like, such like a it's been a core memory for me like we had we were just lazy we were in pjs watching tv we would cry we would play music um and i guess now like times have changed times have changed crazy like now it's just me and my siblings we don't celebrate with our family anymore um and i think it's better that way it's for sure better that way and we kind of just learn together and heal together because at the end of the day it's just me and my siblings and I guess what I like would love for you guys to take from this is like cherish what you have I know that sounds so cliche and so overplayed and overrated and all that stuff but it's like I'm speaking 11 years later and it's like wow it still hurts um and you know I wanted to talk about it because everyone's always asking me, like, where were you? How did you find out? And it's, it made me more upset, actually, that, like, I had to find out through a friend. And I know that po probably, like, at that time, they're like, oh, we don't want to scare them. We don't want to say this, this, or that. Um, but, you know, I just wish now that I'm older, like, if there's something going on, like, speaking to parents, if there's something going on in your life or – with kids or whatever, your family, tell them. It only helps them grow more, helps them prepare their mind and strengthens their mind and strengthens their heart and, you know, really prepares them for the real world because this, it's scary out here. <laughs> it's so scary to live and wander in the unknown, but I'm really thankful that I have, I've always been faith-based. Like, I love God and I love everything that, you know, he's set before me and my family. Um, so, yeah. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. I wonder, like, if you guys, I wish I did questions so that you guys can go ahead and ask if anything. Um, but, again, we're, I think I'm, I'm pretty much wrapped up here. Um, but if there's anything that you guys can take from this episode is to really cherish what you have. And I really want to appreciate I really want to thank the fans because I appreciate you guys keeping the memory and who she is alive and being, you know, so faithful to my mother and respecting us as well. There's some people that don't respect, <laughs> you know, people always making these rumors and accusations like my mom is alive and like, ugh. it's like, let's not do that. You guys, we know the truth and the facts and you know, sometimes I wish like she was, I don't know, kidnapped and we were able to find her like now. Imagine 10 years later finding someone that would be insane, but it's not the case. Um, but I do want to say thank you guys. I thank you because she was a beautiful woman. She was a beautiful artist and she left the last day doing what she loved the most for her fans and for the people that she loved the most, which was her fans. And I just, I appreciate every single one of you loving her and loving our family, my siblings specifically for standing by our side at any given moment for being here with us and never giving up on us. And I thank God for the experiences with, you know, giving me this life and although it's been ugly and, you know, terrible, I just thank God because I've made it so far. It's been a struggle, but I've made it so far and I have to give the credit to him. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. <laughs> thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode. If you guys are watching this on December 9th, make sure you guys take a shot for me. Take a shot for my mom and to her good music and all those good things. I'm probably going to be chilling at home with my siblings this year. Maybe not. We've kind of we're kind of figuring that out. But 
enjoy the day. It's another day to be alive and to be grateful and to just live the life that we're given. So thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching. Um, sorry if it was a little emotional, but from my heart to yours, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe on this video. Let us know who you want next week or later on for episodes. Let us know who you want for guests. Um, leave a review and I will see you guys next Tuesday.